Five. Stay standing with me. We're going to quickly pray. But uh, I couldn't help but get a little bit emotional on the side because this is a lot more than just an opportunity. But um, this is an honor. So thank you to everyone that made this happen. But let's all quickly close our eyes and pray because I've got time limit. God, would you quiet my words? Speak through me. Amen. You can take your seats. Let's go. We are finishing up Old Testament Heroes. It's been this whole month of November, and we, along with Aldrin and Paula, get to finish it off. And I would like to go to Daniel 3. So while I introduce you to my sermon, I'd like you to start finding that in your Bibles. But I'm talking on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and we're talking about courage, because who knows that they were very courageous in this story But we're going to quickly summarize this because I'm not going to go through the whole chapter because that would be my whole time up. So basically, King Nebuchadnezzar, still probably the coolest name in the Bible. He was a bad guy, but a cool name. Basically, he builds an idol. This is the thing. He gets everyone and he goes, when the musicians start playing, you've got to start bowing to this thing. These three brothers who were men of God said, no, we're going to stand. And then I'm going to get the team to chuck up the verses that I've asked. I said at the end, but from verse 16 to 18, There we go. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, look at this part, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and we will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Let's just leave it there at a moment. The past two weeks I've been away. I was overseas. I was on a holiday. I was in the Middle East. Who knew that a 20-year-old would want to go on a holiday in the Middle East? But... I got to go to the F1. It was awesome. It was amazing. But what they had after every day at the F1, they would have a concert. And it was incredible. So you'd finish the day on the track and then you'd go over to this park and there was a mad concert. Anyway, we were listening to this artist to be unnamed. And, you know, in classic artist form, they're, you know, they're getting everyone's attention. They go, all right, let's get the hands up. And, you know, me as a faithful member of the concert, I put my hand up straight away. Anyway, my friend that I tell you, he turns to me and he goes, wow. I'm like, what? And he goes, so when he tells you to put your hand up, it goes straight up. But when you're in class or you're in church. And I'm like, why are you watching me worship, first of all? Second of all, I put both my arms up. I put my legs up if I could. And as much as it was a joke, as I was preparing for this message, God kind of spoke to me through it. And he told me, he goes, hey, Lincoln, what you don't know is, is that you actually bow to a lot more things than you realize. You know, the world we live in, we're constantly being influenced by something. Gabe Kelly actually preached this morning at our Northern Beaches campus. Shout out Northern Beaches, I love you guys. And he was saying that we are constantly being influenced. It's something like 1,400 things are being put through our mind every hour. And what I love about this story is that no matter the influence, no matter what the world tried to turn these boys into, they were able to stand. They were able through courage to stand. The world tried to force them to bow, but courage allowed them to stand. Who knows that the worlds that we're living in are trying to take our attention spans off something that we know is true. They're trying to make us bow to certain things that we know isn't right. Can I encourage you? that this courage that these boys had came from an understanding of who God is. If I could encourage you with one thing tonight, we need to be reminded of who we're standing for. We aren't standing for an artist. We aren't standing for a preacher. We aren't standing for the people around us. We're actually standing for a God that created you. We're actually standing for a God that loves you. We're actually standing for a God that in Romans 5.8 says that even while we were still sinners, He died for you. You know, Jesus hung on that cross, so now we can stand. Jesus hung, so we can stand. Can you imagine a people who actually decided, you know what, I'm actually going to stand for myself. I know who my God is. The boys said that my God is able. They knew who their God was. Can you imagine a people that, you know what, said, I actually know who my God is, and I know I'm able, and I know that He is able. Can you imagine a people that actually decided to stand for others? You know, we're actually called to stand for the people that are poor. We're actually called to stand for the ones that are persecuted. For one of the days in the past two weeks, I got to spend a day in Jordan. And we were spending the whole day with a missionary family. 
And for me, I was torn because we were spending time with these two boys, seven and 11. And my heart broke because these guys were bright eyed hearing about Australia while they're in the field in Jordan as their parents are being missions. We're actually called to stand for these people. We're actually called to stand for so much than we thought. And before I pass it on to Paula, I want to finish with this one point and it's going to come up on the screen. If, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Standing takes courage. Courage takes faith. And faith takes knowing God. If we can go back to this verse, and I'm going to finish with this. In verse 17, in verse 18. After he says, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us. But he says this in verse 18. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set. Let's be a people of faith. That, you know... We know who our God is, that we will stand no matter who's trying to tell us to bow, no matter the influence that they're trying to put on us, that we will stand because we know who our God is. But even if he does not come through, let me tell you, world, I'm not going to bow to anything that you've got to say because I know who my God is. And with that, I'd like to introduce to you who's going to speak on this faith that we need, because as I said, it's going to take faith. It's going to take knowing God to stand. It's going to take faith to have courage to actually understand who our God is and to actually understand that when we go into the world that people are actually looking at us. Just like those boys did when they stood, that there was actually people watching, that they were actually standing for so much more than themselves, that people were watching on. Do you know when you stand, people are going to watch. People are going to see it. And it's going to take faith to stand. But people are going to be better for it. And God's smiling down watching you. And as I wrap up, I would like to introduce Paula as she is going to touch more on faith. So let's be upstanding for Paula.